Need you for the old me. Need you for my sanity. Need you to remind me where I come from. Can you remind me? Hey guys, it's Grace Mona again. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, today I'm gonna be talking. This is a continuation of my how to get clinical experience as a pre-med or a pre-PA student. Um, so this episode pretty much is going to be about scribing and what that is and how you can get involved. So to start it off, scribing is basically, or a medical scribe, is basically an individual who's trained on medical terminology, um, has some understanding of electronic medical record systems, and basically documents um, the patient history, notes, the treatment plan, the physical examination, and all the labs that are ordered. Um, and you might also enter some billing codes if you're trained on that as well. Um, and just to give some background, so my credibility, I know I come, or in this series I'm planning to wear a scrubs because I usually take these after my internship. So I taped my last video, sorry. Um, I taped my last video on shadowing last week and it's a new week, so new scrubs. And I'm also doing a Scrub America series on my experience as well. So going back into my um, credibility or like my background. So um, pretty much my freshman year I did shadowing and sophomore year I also did a little bit of shadowing and volunteering at a hospital nearby my campus. Um, and then junior year or this summer before my junior year I started training to become a medical scribe of Scribe America. Um, and I worked with them for a semester and then I got another position in a like um, clinic, a women's health clinic referred to as comprehensive women's health um that was closer to my school than the hospital that I used to work at um well actually they're kind of in the same city Silver Spring so it wasn't too far but um yeah so I pretty much worked there for a year and like 10 months but cumulatively I have two and a half ish years I think two years and four months to be exact um of scribing so I didn't necessarily do the commitment of Scribe America where they have their two years, but I'll go into that in my scribing video. So that's pretty much in a nutshell what scribing is and also my background um, as a medical scribe. Um, the other thing, so how can you get started and when can you typically get started with scribing? So when I, I decided to get started with scribing my junior year because I obviously work off campus a lot. Um, and I also never worked before college, so um, I pretty much first was working on campus like little side jobs, you know, help build my resume um, before, you know, exploring off-campus positions. And I feel like I'll make another video on the pros and cons of working on campus versus like working off campus. So um, I applied around like March-ish, my sophomore year to start training for um, the scribe position with Scribe America and they were pretty much the flagship company. Um, I was actually informed about their company my freshman year by a friend that I had, such like an upperclassman that was like a mentor for me. Um, and he was like, oh yeah, if you want to scribe, like you could definitely look at this company and get started. It's like a really good opportunity to build clinical experience and things like that. Um, so I, it was always on the back of my mind, but I knew that I, I didn't have a car and like I wasn't going to be able to like you know, deal, like, I was having difficulty balancing school my freshman year, so um, there was no way that I was gonna, like, work off campus as a scribe my sophomore year, but some people um, actually start as early as their freshman year. You only have to be 18 years old to work as a scribe for Scribe America, um, and in my opinion, I think there's some pros and cons to um, scribing early. I definitely think you should first start off shadowing and like the earliest you should start scribing like in a hospital or an emergency room situation, emergency department, where you're going to be doing overnight shifts should be like your like sophomore or junior year because it's going to be a lot and you really want to have a good grasp of like your academics and your academic performance because it could, you know, be detrimental to your academic performance. I would say that my first semester scribing, my GPA went down like... I think point, point zero 0.05 so it wasn't that big of a decrease but it was you know my GPA dropping so that is something to keep in mind that like it can be a distraction and can be a lot to manage um, I was able to manage it but I definitely think that I could have done better academically if I had probably personally for me if I could do it over again probably would have waited to my senior year so that's pretty much all my opinions on like when you can start 
Um, training, as I mentioned, medical scribe is usually well versed on medical terminology and like the pathophysiology that's essential for either emergency medicine or whatever um, practice that you're working in. So maybe you're working in a dermatology office, maybe you're working in a women's health or OB office or a pediatric office. Like you're well versed on pretty much the procedures and the medical terminology that's essential for that field. Um, with emergency department or emergency medicine, you're gonna be like well versed on like the basics of kind of like everything in my opinion. Um, so you're gonna know a little bit of everything and that's pretty much where I first started and then I got to like where my interests were after getting the skills to you know wager my skills and apply for a position that I was more interested in. Um, it's basically as I mentioned earlier I like to consider scribing page shadowing where you're a little bit more involved so you're not just taking your own notes for your enrichment you're taking your notes kind of for a stake for the billing purposes of the practice or the hospital that you're working for. Um, while also getting to view, in my opinion, through sh scribing, I got to view, nah, I wouldn't say I viewed more, but you gain more knowledge just because you have to be a little bit more involved. I think there are some shadowing experiences where you can kind of check out and just like not fully, you know, be there or not, you know, really have to be processing and like being like, okay, we did this and this is going to be probably the next step that we're going to do. Um, so I definitely think that scribing is a little bit more has more at stake but is in essential or in a short simple way of thinking about it it's basically like paid um, shadowing experience um, and I think scribing in my opinion is out of all the like five um, different options or <laughs> so sorry it's like yeah out of the five ob other options that are available for clinical experiences that I'll be going over I think that shadowing I'm sorry scribing is the most <laughs> valuable shadowing is like the close second for me but definitely scribing was the most impactful and I definitely um, with drafting up my personal statements for med school I definitely find that that is the thing that comes up a lot um, obviously interning abroad as a medical intern was really valuable for me but that's a very unique and not something that everyone can do so I think that is something to keep in mind that there are some extracurriculars that people can have or there are other clinical experiences that are outside of the realm of what I'm covering. Um, but pretty much that's how I went about um, scribing. Um, generally speaking how you can go about scribing. Usually there's Scribe America is pretty much everywhere on the East Coast. I think there are even they have some West Coast locations. There's other scribe companies such as like Elite Medical Scribes. Um, as well as Scribekick, which is like a scribe company that works during the day. Um, if you're an undergraduate student um, looking for a scribe position, typically you'd be asked to do an informal two-year part-time agreement. Um, and if you're doing full-time, you only have to do a one-year agreement with them, just because they know that most of us are pre-med, pre-PA students, you know, trying to get clinical experience before applying. Um, for pre-PA students, really, really important detail to note is that some schools do not consider scribing clinical experience because it's not hands-on. Um, so you probably need to check that. There are more and more schools that are gradually accepting it as clinical experience, but for the most part, you're probably going to be looking at like working as a CNA or a medical assistant um, or even EMT. So that pretty much um, is all you need to know about scribing. Um, uh, last point that I forgot to say in terms of how to get a scribe position is also contacting hospitals near you. Um, there's one hospital near me that I know they don't work specifically with Scribe America or Elite Medical Scribes. They have their own system. Um, and sometimes, like for my scribe position that I got in a um, clinic, um, basically I just applied to their application via Indeed. Um, or actually I posted my resume on Indeed and then I got contacted. So sometimes you can, you know, post your resume or maybe people might contact you, although LinkedIn isn't the best. Sometimes people might contact you through those systems and I was able to get a pretty good position um, through that as well. So those are pretty much the options. You can also check your school like Career Center website or Listserv um, for different opportunities as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little snippet. Stay tuned for my review if you're considering working for Scribe America. I plan to make a series on, you know, how to get hired or when to apply, um, what to study, how to study, and then also like working um, at the hospital.
hospital as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and watch some of my other videos. Feel free to comment down below if you've been a scribe or if there's anything that you felt that I missed in this video um, or if you have any other questions. I definitely will try to answer them. But yeah, see you guys later. Bye.